The man who concluded peace with Palestinians, it's Haq Rabin, was assassinated by an Israeli extremist, aggravated by the same person, Netanyahu, who is leading Israel now, and who blocked any possibilities for peace. Putting Gaza under terrible siege, depriving 2.2 million people of water, of food, of electricity, of medications. Thousands and thousands of sick people could die now at any moment because they don't have medications. They don't have access to kidney dialysis. Gaza is besieged completely. And even the convoy of some support of medications that could come from Egypt was threatened to be bombarded by Israeli airplanes. Hello and welcome to InfoTalks, a podcast where I put you in the room with some of the biggest thought leaders from around the world. As the Israel-Palestine conflict continues in its sixth day, I'm joined by a renowned peace activist and advocate of a two-state solution, Dr. Mustafa Barghouti, co-founder of Palestinian National Initiative, who joins us from Ramallah in West Bank to speak on the developing situation and offer a Palestinian perspective on what are his apprehensions about the ongoing trajectory of the conflict and violence there. Dr. Mustafa Barghouti, welcome to InfoTalk. Thank you for hosting me. Okay, uh, Dr. Mustafa Barghouti, let's go ahead and start our conversation and let me uh, go ahead and start my very first question. You know, nothing has really divided the public opinions and especially uh, the narratives which have been dehumanizing people on both sides uh, never, se- particularly ever since the breakout of violence involving Israel and Palestine, resulting in the loss of 1,300 Israelis after Hamas's infiltration of southern Israel and uh, the following uh, rocket attacks. And similarly, what we've actually seen is, uh, you know, the, the massive retaliation that has been undertaken by Israel has resulted in the loss of about Uh, 1,200 Palestinians in Gaza, and uh, scores of people uh, have been injured, and over 200,000 people have also been displaced as a result of it. Given an environment, the kind of rhetoric, and when there are actually fears of a regional conflagration, uh, how much, uh, what are your fears exactly uh, about the escalation of the conflict itself if it's not arrested uh, as, as it continues to grow? My fear is, is what we have today, actually. And uh, what we see today is a very consistent effort by Israel and uh, their supporters in the West mm. to completely dehumanize Palestinians and to justify the crimes that are committed and were committed historically against the Palestinian people. If you start looking at the situation only from the point of six days ago, then it would be hard to understand what's happening. I think we have to look uh, at the strategic cause of the whole problem and the root cause of the whole problem. And the root cause has always been Israel's displacement of Palestinian people. The Israeli massacres that took place in 1948, uh, destroying no less than 520 Palestinian communities and ethnically cleansing 70% of the Palestinian people who became refugees. 70% of the population of Gaza are these, are, um, are from those refugees who were displaced by Gaza, by Israel. The other point is that we've been under military Israeli occupation for the last 56 years. West yeah. Bank and Gaza, with all the atrocities of occupation and all the atrocities of oppression practiced by Israel. And during this period of time, the world community failed cons- consistently in forcing Israel to implement or accept international law. They allowed Israel to continue to violate international law, even when Palestinians accepted to recognize Israel, and even when Palestinians concluded peace agreement with Israel. The man who concluded peace with Palestinians, it's Haq Rabin, was assassinated by an Israeli extremist, aggravated by the same person, Netanyahu, who is leading Israel now, and who blocked any possibilities for peace. When that all happened, there was no Hamas. Hamas is a new invention of a reaction to the fact that the world community has 
repeatedly ignored our plights, allowed Israel to continue occupation, allowed Israel to build illegal settlements on our land, allowed Israel to continue the process of subjugating Palestinians to the system of apartheid, a much worse apartheid than what happened in South Africa. If we go back only eight months ago, during the last eight months, I'm not going to talk just about decades ago, during the last eight months, four things happened by Israel. They killed no less than 248 civilian Palestinians, including 40 children. I did not hear the West protest that. I did not hear the world media paying attention to that. We also witnessed during these months unprecedented attacks of Israeli illegal settlers, terrorizing Palestinians, and conducting ethnic cleansing, new ethnic cleansing of 20 communities in the Jordan Valley, in Hebron area, in the West Bank. And in addition to that, we witnessed unprecedented level of attacks on the Aqsa Mosque, the holiest Muslim site for Muslim people. The, the, the Aqsa Mosque was constantly invaded by Israeli Jewish people, constantly invaded by people who wanted to transform it into a Jewish place for prayer and constantly attack constant attacks not only on Muslim holy sites and on Muslims who were praying but also on Christians. This is the background of what has what was happening and the background of the new confrontation. But but in addition to that now what we witness are four processes by Israel. The first process is dehumanization of Palestinians in which all the Western media in the world is participating, blaming things that never happened, reporting videos that never really happened in Palestine, claiming that Palestinians were beheading children's heads, which is totally untrue. I know that civilians were killed on the Israeli side, and I don't accept that. I don't accept the killing of any civilian. But the, the situation now is dehumanization of Palestinians, putting Gaza under terrible siege, depriving 2.2 million people of water, of food, of electricity, of medications. Thousands and thousands of sick people could die now at any moment because they don't have medications. They don't have access to kidney dialysis. Gaza is besieged completely. And even the convoy of some support of medications that could come from Egypt was threatened to be bombarded by Israeli airplanes. Is that acceptable? And then add to that airstrikes, I will finish now. Add to that airstrikes that don't leave any place. Thousands of houses have been demolished. Children, 328 children so far, Palestinian children were killed by Israeli airstrikes. You compare Hamas, okay, Hamas killed civilians. Israel is a state. It claims it's a democracy. It claims it is a democratic state, the best democratic state in the region. And it is the one that is killing children with their airplanes now. How could the world be silent about that in a strike that continues and Israel promises that they will even invade militarily the whole of Gaza? The last point, Netanyahu declared that all Palestinians in Gaza must leave their homes. Where should they go to? To the sea? No, his spokesperson came out and the military spokesperson came up and said, all Palestinians in Gaza must evict and go to Egypt. So Netanyahu is promising another ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people in Gaza by forcing them all to go to Egypt. That explains the map that Mr. Netanyahu carried in the United Nations, where he showed the map of Israel including annexing West Bank, Gaza Strip, and the Golan Heights. Dr. Dr. Barghouti, recently Egypt actually made an outreach to uh, uh, you know, different stakeholders, particularly on the ongoing humanitarian situation in Gaza itself. And they did reach out to United States and the regional countries, uh, particularly st stressing on providing access to humanitarian aid to Gaza. Uh, but however, they you know, rejected this idea of humanitarian uh, corridor itself. What do you think really prompted that? What are some of the fears uh, that perhaps Egypt also has and perhaps, you know, uh, Palestinians in Gaza might also have uh, that they're not, uh, uh, you know, welcoming to this idea? No, Palestinians are totally welcoming 
a humanitarian corridor that would bring water, electricity, and medication to them. But we are against Lincoln's proposal to open a corridor so that Palestinians would be evicted from their homes in Gaza. That's the difference. A humanitarian passage is needed to provide supplies of medications, water, and food to Palestinians, not to force Palestinians to be ethnically cleansed outside Gaza Strip. That is the difference. So we welcome any support. And Egypt is ready to provide food and medications. We are ready to send from the West Bank a lot of supplies through Egypt to Gaza. But Israel is preventing that. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and ask you my next question. And this is about the first ever call that has taken place between Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and uh, the Iranian president, Ibrahim Raisi, where they have both discussed uh, you know, efforts to halt the escalation. Uh, they also spoke about calls to uh, you know, seize uh, targeting civilian population as well as you know, uh, addressing the humanitarian situation in Gaza at the moment. And in addition, we're also expecting uh, Secretary Antony Blinken, uh, who's likely to uh, meet the Israeli leadership as well as uh, President Mahmoud Abbas of the Palestinian Authority. Uh, how do you think can the international community and the regional countries, uh, many of whom, and or if I may say some of whom, uh, actually have uh, relations with Israel to you know, de-escalate the situation and uh, prevent from uh, prevent this crisis from or this conflict from getting worse. What we need from international community, and excuse me to say, I don't trust the United States, and I don't think that the United States will play a positive role. They are taking the side of the Israelis. They are supporting Israel in every possible way. They are sending even aircraft carriers to the Middle Mediterranean to support Israel, and uh, they are supporting Israeli invasion of Gaza. These, these people cannot be calling themselves mediators. Actually, they are totally on the side of Israel. He spoke only about the plight of those who are Israelis. He did not do anything to bring justice to the cause of killing Shirin Abu Akli, who was the most peaceful journalist in Palestine and who was American too. And the Israelis did not indict a single soldier for killing him. We don't accept this discrimination. But the way out of this is very simple. It's not by sending aircrafts, it's not by sending aircraft carriers, it's by forcing Israel to have ceasefire immediately and initiating immediately uh, an exchange of prisoners between Israel and uh, the people in Gaza so that all Israelis that are held in Gaza now and who, who could be killed by Israeli airstrikes could be relieved and sent home to Israel and that all Palestinian prisoners, the 5,300 of them, including some who have been in Israeli jails for 43 years, would be released. Uh, that, that is the way. And then what we need is really a, a true process to end Israeli occupation. Because as long as there is Israeli occupation, as long as we are subjected to a system of apartheid, we will resist. Because it's our right to resist occupation and resist injustice, and this means a protracted conflict. And this is not good for both sides. But to leave things as they are, and allowing these Israeli, the thousands of Israeli tanks to invade Gaza will lead to another explosion in the north, and then the whole region will be up in arms, and it will be totally destructive to the lives of everybody, including Palestinians and Israelis. All right, Dr. Mustafa Barghouti, you've, you've certainly outlined your expectations, but what do you expect from the regional countries, particularly now that, you know, Saudi Arabia has made an outreach to Iran as well? And of course, you know, there are other countries that also have uh, ties with Israel as well, and including those that might not. But what do you really expect from these countries to, you know, uh, sort of, you know, flex their diplomatic muscle or to come up with their efforts to seize hostilities right now as they exist? Well, uh, I think we have uh, to, first of all, ask all Arab countries to take a strong stand for the Palestinians. And uh, we have to alert everybody to the fact that Netanyahu has been trying to normalize relations with all Arab countries while keeping occupation and the system of apartheid. Every act of normalization between some Arab countries like the Emirates and Israel 
only encouraged Netanyahu to proceed further in aggression against Palestinian people. And instead of bringing peace closer, it made peace more distant. That is the truth and reality of today. That's why we demand that all these normalization actions would be canceled and uh, to force Israel to put pressure on Israel to stop not only the aggression now in Gaza, but also to stop the system of occupation. Uh, we hope that Saudi Arabia can play a positive role here because, because it is the custodian of not only holy Muslim places in uh, Mecca, but also they are the custodians of uh, the Arab Peace Initiative, which said that no normalization should happen between Israel and Arab countries as long as there is occupation and Palestinians have do not have their independent state. Uh, on the other hand, I think efforts have to be made by the all the region, all Arab countries and non-Arab countries, to exercise pressure on the international community to force Israel to stop this war and to have a ceasefire. That includes, of course, uh, seizing fire from everybody and every side. That is the only way out of this situation so that we don't face a very serious explosion that could affect other countries in the region. One last point about Islamic countries. We warn against Netanyahu's effort, efforts to isolate Palestinians and dehumanize him, them and then try to normalize relations with other countries. Pakistan struggled for independence from the British colony, colonial system. What we live in as Palestinians is nothing but another settler colonial system that was initiated by the same British colonialism with Balfour Declaration. And so I know and I believe that Pakistani people would support the Palestinian struggle. They see us as brothers, uh, not only because we are Muslims and not only because we are Arabs, but because of humanity, because of supporting the proper humanitarian and human rights and international law. I am very, I have to mention that we are absolutely surprised about the reaction of the Prime Minister of India, Mr. Modi, who took the side of Israel completely. I've been talking to many Indian outlets and media outlets and demanding that they respect at least the feelings of their own people and the great history of Mahatma Gandhi, who was one of the first leaders in the world who warned against the fact that Israel was establishing a very dangerous colonial system with the help of the British at the expense of the Palestinian people. But are you quite surprised by the dehyphenated approach that uh, India has actually taken on this issue, uh, especially how it has tried approaching, you know, the, uh, you know, its relations with Palestinian Authority versus how it is approaching with Israel at this point? Of course, we are absolutely surprised because this does not fit with the historical position of India during Gandhi time, during Nehru time, during the Andhra Gandhi time. It does not not fit with that. It's totally the opposite of that. And it is totally unfortunate. And uh, it, it does not fit with international law. But we know that one of the main motivating factors of this unacceptable position are the military deals between India and Israel. So before we wrap up our conversation, my last question is, and I would like to sort of stress your own credentials as well, that you know, you've been actually an active proponent of nonviolence and strong proponent at the same time of Palestinian statehood as well. In a recent TV interview with Tim, Seba Tim Sebastian, uh, the former Israeli Prime Minister, Ehudo Olmert, actually said that once the war is over, uh, the two-state solution is the only way to bring peace between Israel and Palestine. You too, in your latest interview with Piers Morgan, said that statesmen are needed to resolve this dispute and bring lasting peace between Israelis and Palestinians. Uh, how hopeful are you that the global and regional leadership will head the, heed this call in the short and the long term. At this moment, I am not very hopeful because uh, at least in relationship to Western governments who are really taking the very bad stand of supporting Israel in, in whatever it does and uh, in participating in a process of dehumanizing all Palestinians. This must change. And the big question that I raised uh, in so many in different interviews, and I raise it again, is where, why we have double standard when we compare the Western positions in Ukraine with that in the Palestine. By which law 
some countries say that they support Ukraine with $224 billion of military equipment, of airplanes, of tanks, and financial aid, of course, to fight occupation, as they say. And in our case, they provide military equipment and aid and unconditional support to the occupier rather than the occupied in the case of Palestine by supporting Israel. That is a very clear, blunt, double standard, and it's a racist one, and this has to stop. I hope we can get out of this situation. Our immediate goal is immediate ceasefire, immediate exchange of prisoners, and de-escalation of the situation. Later, there are one of two options. Either a two-state solution, which in my opinion, Israel has killed with all these settlements that they have built, and with electing the most extreme fascist leaders ever in the history of Israel, like Smotrich, who doesn't shy from declaring that his goal is to fill the West occupied West Bank with settlers and settlements so that Palestinians would lose any hope of a state of their own. And then we will have, as he says, they will have, the, we the Palestinians will have only one of three options, either to immigrate, or accept a life of subjugation to Israeli rule, or die. That is the real official position of this Israeli government. And we never saw any serious condemnation of this from the same Western governments who are now fully supporting Israel. I think if they don't allow a two-state solution very, very soon, the only alternative to one apartheid state, which we have today, will be one democratic state where both people will be respected equally, where we as Palestinians will have equal rights, and I mean by that equal civil and national rights. But one thing I want to assure you of, and assure our friends in Pakistan, we the Palestinians will never stop struggling for our rights and for our freedom, like all decent peoples in this world. One fantastic Palestinian poet, who was a mayor of Nazareth, said something which, which, which really I like so much. He said, we the Palestinians are not better than any other people in the world, but no other people in the world is better than us. And that's what we ask for, respect, dignity, and freedom. And, and do, you, do you think by demanding these very rights, does it make, you know, does it make Palestinians or anyone demanding such rights uh, end up becoming an anti-Semite, or do you think, you know, demands like these are going to be a source of coexistence and peace between the two sides? How could we be anti-Semites when we are Semites ourselves? It's very strange. Uh, look, the Israeli establishment, the Zionist establishment, is trying to take away from Palestinians the right to resist in any way. If we res if Palestinians resist in a military way, they call them terrorists. If we resist in a nonviolent way, as I call for, they call us violent. If we resist even by speaking, like I am doing now with you, they say they are, we are provocators. And if an international person supports Palestinian rights, they call him anti-Semite. And if a Jewish person, and there are many of those, supports the Palestinian rights, they call him self-hating Jew. This is an, a system of intellectual terror that the Zionist and Israeli movement use to prevent people from taking the proper stand of supporting international law and the rights of people to be free. Dr. Mustafa Barghouti, thank you so much for joining us for this conversation. And we hope that you know this unwanted loss of precious lives on both sides can be averted at earliest and that the demands of the rights of Palestinians can be met soon. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for staying with us through this conversation with Dr. Mustafa Barghouti on Infer Talks. Our team works very hard to make this work possible, and it would mean the world to us if you could like and share our content to show your support. And if you'd like to stay informed on upcoming podcasts and other work, please hit the bell icon.